David, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, Amir, how are you? I am great. It's a gorgeous day, and I'm loving it. How's loving today? How's morale and the uh, the baby? The morale and Hannah are okay. Ben's all right too. He's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Behaving? Uh-huh. He is not. That's one thing he doesn't do. <laughs> I see. Behaving is not a thing. David, thank you for taking my call, buddy. I have a question for you. A friend of mine has his. Uh, his closing is coming up really quickly, really fast. And the fund that he wanted to use for this is not coming through. Essentially, his mortgage is not coming through. And um, what what can he do? I see. Um, so he has a closing coming up, and he, he just found out that his lender may not um, lend to him. Give him the the funds that he needs yeah. to close. I see. Yeah. Okay, well, I mean, that's a pretty tough spot that your um, that your friend's in right now, but it's not uncommon. It does happen from time to time where lenders may, for whatever reason, uh, decide to um, drop the the borrower. Um, and uh, well, I, I would say this: there are options that your friend has, so it's not as though he's um, without any um, choices at this point. Let me just ask you a few questions, though. Um, does he have his down payment at least ready and good to go? Do you know? Yeah, in, got... in, in this particular case, he has 20% credit. So the down payment is there, set aside, ready to go. It's just the yeah. loan that um, is, is up in up in the air in question. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing I would do if I suspected that I was going to have difficulty getting um, the mortgage funds in time to close is I would reach out to the real estate lawyer. So I'm assuming at this point, he already has a real estate lawyer retained. Um, I, I would speak to the lawyer and, and have the lawyer reach out to the seller's lawyer to get a feel for whether the seller is willing to provide an extension. And mm -hmm. the reason why I would say this is that now your guy, your, your client or friend may not need the extension. Um, they may be able to find another loan from now until the closing date. I don't know how far out the closing date is, mm -hmm. um, but in, in, in this situation, what I would recommend is for the lawyer to at least get a feeler um, and, and get an idea from the seller stamp that they're willing to give that extension. Cause there's no guarantee that they can find a, find a backup mortgage at this point. Right. And mm -hmm. as you know, having, you know, when you go through a mortgage application, it takes time. Right. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of documents you have to submit. They have to review your application. So, you know, it's not necessarily an instant thing where you're going to get approved and then they're going to give you the loan the next day. So because there is time that's required to, you know, arrange a new loan, um, I, I would first figure out if, if you can buy some time. So if, if I was in your uh, client's uh, or your friend's position, I would see if the seller is willing to provide um, at least a few days extension. Why? Because that, that buys you time to see what kind of options you have. Okay. But doesn't um, that cost money? Um, well, what's the alternative, Amir, is if, if you don't have the means to close on the closing date as scheduled in your agreement or purchase and sale, then you're, you're in default and mm -hmm. you know, a lot worse can happen than, you know, paying, for example, an extension cost to the seller. But before we get into that, um, I mean, your client has to know, or he's aware that if, if he doesn't close on time, then he will be in default. And there is the possibility that the seller could sue him, note him in default and sue him and uh, go after his deposit. And of course, I, I don't, I don't know what amount, I don't know what his deposit is, sure it's a sizable amount and he's not willing mm -hmm. to just forego it right yeah and walk away from it so easily yeah so i mean he has a deposit on the line and potentially he can uh be sued for damages if he doesn't close on time so it, it is a pretty serious situation if he doesn't have the means mm -hmm. or the funds to close um on the closing date so i i i would definitely reach out to the seller's lawyer and figure out, first of all, if the seller is prepared to even give the extension, because even if the seller had um, 
um, every intention to give the extension. If, for example, the seller is also buying a property on the same day, it might be difficult because then um, the seller, of course, needs your friend's uh, sale proceeds in order to fund their sale or their purchase, mm -hmm. sorry. Um, so if that's all happening on the same day, then, then what's gonna happen? Of course, you have this uh, chain reaction of closings. Your, uh, your, your friend's uh, seller is gonna have to then ask for an extension from their seller. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and work yeah. something out. So it, it could get complicated, but the first thing I would do at the very least is see if um, the seller is willing and uh, capable of an extension. Now, you're right, as you alluded to before, sometimes the seller will, um, they will ask for an extension uh, uh, penalty or they'll want compensation. So if they are, assuming that they are willing to provide the extension, mm -hmm. they're gonna want something out of it. Um, in most cases, you know, the, their lawyer may, for example, ask for additional legal fees. The seller may ask for their, you know, their, uh, their carrying costs to be covered during that extension period. So for example, if they have a mortgage and they're paying daily interest on it, they're gonna want that interest to be covered. They, they may have to extend out their um, uh, home insurance policy. So whatever additional premium is involved there, they may want compensation from the uh, buyer. So there, there, are, there might be extension costs involved, but again, what is the alternative, right? Is you, you yeah. face a situation or where you can't have your deposit, deposit um, you know, you are risk yeah. losing your deposit and potentially being sued. So um, in, in terms of alternatives now, I mean, what I would recommend to your client is, or your friend is, try to uh, work with a mortgage agent or broker to find alternative financing as soon as possible. You know, um, they may have to, I don't, uh, I don't know if you're, if you know this or not, do they have a mortgage with a bank right now? Like with an institutional lender? I believe so. I believe so. It was one of the big five banks. Okay. So, I mean, I, I don't know what the reason is why um, their financing fell through. I mean, there could be a variety of reasons. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, there are private lenders out there who can provide mortgage funds within a relatively short turnaround, albeit they will charge, they generally do charge higher rates of interest, you know, more than what, you know, the institutional mm -hmm. lenders will charge. But I mean, it, it's, it's the next best option for your client. Um, they may have to find a private, uh, lender. And uh, some private lenders will, well, if the private lender knows that your client got um, approval from an institution, then a lot of times they will take solace in that fact, right? You know, because um, mm -hmm. that usually means that, you know, they have decent credit, their money they have then, the, yeah. the financial means to, you know, cover the payments. So you, you, you could definitely, your friend could definitely look at that avenue. I mean, I would say look at both avenues, right? Look at other institutional lenders, but for whatever reason, um, that, that may not be a viable option at this point, depending on why uh, he lost his mortgage in the first place, right? But mm -hmm. if, if, he need, if he needs a quick uh, mortgage and a quick turnaround, then uh, I would say you can look to a private lender. You may have to pay more interest, but one way to kind of mitigate the, the costs involved in dealing with a private lender is you can ask for a shorter term on the mortgage. So almost like, think of it like a bridge loan. You could try to negotiate with the private lender and say, look, um, you know, this is the situation I'm in. I, yeah. I don't necessarily need a mortgage for a year or over a year. I just need it for, let's say five months or six months to give me some time so that I can then eventually refinance with an institutional lender and then pay you out. Mm -hmm. and there are some lenders who will be willing to uh, provide a shorter term uh, loan. Um, mm -hmm. And so that, that might be one option for your for your friend okay so that do you think that might be are there risk involved with the private lenders are there um in comparison to well well but from the from the standpoint of uh risk it's it's because with the lender right i mean the lenders get the one giving out the loans so they're the ones who are bearing the risk but mm -hmm. um yes there private loans tend to be more costly for borrowers, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I know interest rates are really low right now. 
So you're probably not going to look at, you know, sub two interest rates from a private lender. I mean, if you get something from a private lender at that rate, then, you know, all power to you. But I mean, whatever it is, I mean, your, your friend's primary objective right now is just to close the deal, right? And if yeah. you can get an extension to buy themselves some time to look at what their options are, then all, all the better. The, the reason why you want to uh, reach out to the seller and find out if they're willing to give the extension in the first place now is because you want to see what kind of options you have. The more time you're granted, then the more options you have, right? Then you could potentially, your friend can potentially look to an institu another institutional lender and at the same time, look at a private lender and, and see, you know, what will, you know, which, whichever lender, I guess, will deliver and come through faster, right? That's probably mm -hmm. the direction that your friend wants yeah. to go in. And it costs um, less, essentially. But if, if, for example, let's say the, in the situation I noted before, uh, your friend's seller cannot give that extension because they might say, look, I would like to help you out, but I'm actually buying on the same day. So I really need your money in order to close my mm -hmm. purchase. Otherwise, Otherwise it will cost me money, yeah. Exactly. So... You yeah. see, in, in that situation, then your, your friend's options might be just limited to trying to find a private lender in, in the few mm -hmm. days that you may have until the closing date to see if... Uh, I think the easiest way is that I ask him to call you and you help him out too. Well, I mean, I, I would love to help <laughs> out your friend. Um, but, you know, if he yeah. has a real estate lawyer already, then, you know, that yeah. would be my advice is to try to make that call and, and to see what kind of options he has. Yeah. Try to get that extension cool. if possible. Okay. Will do. All right. Thank you, David. That was awesome. Yep. Yeah, uh, actually, Amir, I just had a quick question for you. Thank you. Um, uh, it's it's, it's, it's uh, not real estate related. It's more on the corporate side. So with respect to getting an insurance policy, um, a corporate, are, are you familiar? Have you ever done that for clients where you've given, got corporate insurance? Just a few times. Just a few times. Yeah. Okay. I, I have. Uh, I have. I have, I have some experience. Okay. So, I mean, I just wanted to know um, from, from your standpoint, if I have clients who are looking to incorporate their business mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they're looking to get life insurance policies, mm -hmm. they name the corporation as a beneficiary. And, and mm -hmm. why would they do that is, you know, as, as you're aware, if, if, you know, one of them, God forbid, passes away, then it, it, would, mm -hmm. um, it would hurt the operations of the, you know, the mm -hmm. company of their business. So yeah. um, I, I'm wondering if it's best to set that up after incorporation or if they can just go ahead and do that now and get the policy for business. That is a great question. It's, it's a great question. It's also slightly complicated. So as you're aware, if you purchase your life insurance, if any property that you have, you can use income tax tax uh, and capital property. You can use income tax tax section 85 to give it to your corporation at a later date without any Deem disposition or any tax consequences, essentially. The problem is when it comes to life insurance, it, we have to follow the income tax act section 147, right? We no longer look at 85, we look at 147. So <clears throat> if I am a professional and I have a professional corporation, I would say buy your life insurance while you're young and it's cheap, and then move it to your corporation later, right? Uh, because this is something that most people don't realize is that if you can get your life insurance right now versus two years ago, the difference in monthly premium could be very insignificant, 10 or $20 a month, right? But what you're, what's happening is that you're entering into a contract for 20, 40 or your life, like right? 20 years, 40 years or your life, right? So you are doing 10 bucks a month. That's $120 uh, year multiply that by 40 years and that's a lot of money that why would you want to give to an insurance company you should want to keep that money in your pocket uh, so i would recommend buy your life insurance now leave it inside outside of the corporation right now when you do start your corporation reassess the situation because it's impossible for me to give you an advice without looking at the ins and outs of a situation, right? If you have two right. partners that are of a different ages and of a different uh, background, right? I have seen many, many cases that people come together, they start a business, 
in five years, 10 years, they incorporate, the lawyer says you need a buy sell agreement that you want to fund this buy sell agreement with life insurance. So if I die, my wife would have the funds to, uh, your wife, you, you would have the funds to buy my shares from my wife because essentially you don't want to work with my wife, right? <laughs> you want to, um, and you don't want to tell my wife, go home, sit there, I'll just give you the money that he was bringing in every year. Don't worry about it. You want to buy those shares out. What you do is you uh, protect that buy side agreement with the life insurance, but then you come to the situation that these people started a partnership 10 years ago. Today that they're incorporated, they have health issues. One of them has had cancer. The other one had a heart attack. One of them is 72 years old. The other one is 45, right? And uh, ensuring one of the parties becomes almost impossible. When I say almost impossible, because there is no such thing as impossible, we can ensure everyone and everything. I currently have clients who are suffering from uh, really hard illnesses, critical illnesses. And while in their illness, we either have to create a life insurance for them, or we have to buy some of the most expensive plans for them. Right. So, yeah, the point I'm trying to make is that um, I guess there's no point. I would not be able to advise unless I can look at this specific situation. Right. Does you that look sense? at the individuals who are exactly. offering the business and, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what type of business are they running? Sorry, what's that? Fine. What type of business do they have? Is it a professional corporation? Is it a personal? Uh, is it like a restaurant business? What is it? No, no, it's uh, it's they're in distribution. Okay. Yeah. Distribution well, is cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, I'd be happy to take a look at their file. Uh, let me know. Um, uh, if they want my advice, I, I would be happy to provide. Yeah, I'd be happy to connect you to them. Thank you, David. All right, thank you for your time, buddy. I would. Uh, I know you're a very busy person. I know you carved this time out to speak with me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you, buddy. Absolutely. Anytime for you, Amir. Thank you.